What's up everyone? Brennan Mejia here, the Red Ranger and Power Rangers Dino Charge. Today I'm gonna to discuss what it was like to work with some other Ranger actors and what they were like behind the scenes. Let's get into it. All right, first up is, ooh, Austin St. John, the legendary Red Ranger from Power Rangers in the very, Mighty Morphin, you know, the, the OG. So actually, Austin, I met him when I first became a Ranger. I did a convention, I think it was Anime Expo, and I wasn't signing at the convention. I was just there because I'm also into anime. And I ran into him and he was signing and someone introduced me because they knew I was playing a Red Ranger. They're like, oh, it's a new Red Dino Ranger. And you know, you should meet Austin. And he was super cool. He's like, oh, nice to meet you. Welcome to the family. And uh, ran into him some a, a few other times at different cons, but never talking that much because, you know, he's busy doing his thing. I didn't want to bug him. Uh, so when I got to do the crossover on Power Rangers Beast Morphers, I got to really sit down and talk with him. And, you know, we were taking the car ride from the airport, which was about an hour or so to where we were going because of traffic. So him and I got to bond. I believe Yoshi was in the car with us too. And we were just talking about the old days, how it was filming on Mighty Morphin versus how it was to film on Dino Charge and what it's like now to come back. Uh, he never filmed in New Zealand because when he was on Power Rangers, it filmed in California. So some of the differences that Austin told me filming Mighty Morphin versus Dino Charge and Beast Morphers, they had to do a lot more of the in-suit stuff themselves. Often in pretty much every season that's closer to, to now when it was filming, they shoot on two different units. So first unit is where most of the acting stuff takes place. Second unit is where most of the stunt stuff takes place. Most, it's kind of all. But uh, yeah, so basically while we're doing the acting stuff, all the in-suit stuff is happening on second unit. But when he did it, it was different. You know, he would actually be in the suit more often doing the actual stunts. Uh, now they're more like, we want actors who can kind of do stuff, but we don't need them to be martial artists. Although it is helpful. I mean, I have an acrobatic background, so I got to do some of the action stuff myself when time permitted. But it was more of a requirement back in the day on Mighty Morphin than it was during Dino Charge. One of the days after we finished filming, we all went to do, uh, we all went to do uh, jiu jujitsu practice together because Yoshi was really into jujitsu at the time and we invited Austin with us. So I got to roll and do jujitsu with the original Red Ranger. I mean, that was so cool because again, if you don't know, not only do I play a Ranger in Power Rangers Dino Charge, but I was a fan of Power Rangers myself growing up. So I have a bunch of toys from Mighty Morphin. Um, even still, I still have some collectibles from it, but yeah, so super cool, super honored to work with the original Red Ranger. So if you get a chance to meet him at a convention, do it. So, ooh, we're going Red Ranger after Red Ranger. So we got Rory here, the Red Ranger from Power Rangers Beast Morphers himself. Rory's character in the show is supposed to be a gamer, which I was kind of jealous of. Rory himself is an amazing dancer. Every time I see him at a convention, I'm like, Rory, can you teach me one dance move or something? So he, I'm not gonna show you guys because um, I'm not good at, the, good at them really, but maybe in another video. But yeah, so he's like, yeah, so I'll show you how to do blah, blah, blah. And he'll do the moves really smooth and I'll try to do it. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I stick to handstands. Rory was just like super chill. He wasn't nervous or if he was, he hit it really well. And he would just be like, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. He'd like he'd listen, he's very attentive. When you talk to him, he looks you in the eyes. And I always appreciate that because when I'm talking to some people and they're like staring at the floor, I'm like, are you talking to me? Are you like, are you having conversations with a bug? I don't know. Um, but he, he would just hold eye contact and it was always refreshing because then you really feel like, you know, when, he, when you talk, he's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like he's listening. You, you have his undivided attention. And then he would give really, valid and articulate responses, which can't really happen if you're not paying attention. So if you see this guy at a convention, go say hello to him and uh, challenge him to a dance off, if you dare. Oh, cool. Next we have Jackie, the Yellow Ranger in Power Rangers Beast Morphers. She's really cool. Uh, funny, she also dances actually, speaking of all these people who dance. Jackie, so a lot of the Rangers in Power Rangers Beast Morphers, they went and trained with Mike Chat, who is a previous Blue Ranger himself. Uh, he does martial arts and XMA and does like the, I, I don't know if he does it now, I think he still does, but he would do like morning stunt training and fight training for people who wanted to be in the industry. And I believe she did private lessons, lessons with him before booking Beast Morphers. And Chris Cantata, who does Cantata Force, you know, has a really big YouTube following himself, really cool guy. He was invited, as was I, to go to one of my chat's trainings before Jackie went to go film Beast Morphers. So I went with Chris and I actually did a fight scene with Jackie at my chat's gym, which was super cool. So you can see her beat me up. And I think at the end I say something like, yeah, I approve, she's Ranger approved, she can handle herself, something like that. So at Power Morphicon, it was the year that they announced Beast Morphers. I was there, you know, just as like me for Dino Charge, um, signing autographs and Chip, the director of 
Dino Charge, also directed Beast Morphers. And I saw him there and he's like, you know, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we'll see you back in New Zealand one of these days. And after Morphicon, I went to dinner somewhere and then Chip happened to be there with the Beast Morpher cast, like in a excluded area that he probably, you know, booked privately. And I waved and I saw him and then he brought me back to meet the cast of Beast Morphers. And that was the first time I got to talk to Jackie and the rest of them. And that's, and Chip was like, yeah, yeah, I you know, maybe, maybe we'll see you back sooner than you think. And then that led to me coming back for the crossover, so yeah. Ooh, we got Jazz, Blue Ranger in the house. We actually joke how I could be his stunt double because I do stunts as well. And we did a little TikTok thing, I think it was at a ranger stop, where he set to do a backflip and then halfway in the air, I, we edited me in putting his shirt on and then he lands and then it's him. And it was edited poorly on purpose. So you could totally see me doubling him because my hair was longer, I believe at the time. So the only thing that matches really is our skin tone, nothing else other than me wearing his shirt. But I remember he was getting into working out while out there. And then now if you look at him, he's more yoked than I am. So Jazz is a great guy. Uh, I want to work out with him more. I only got to go to the gym, I think one time when I did Mountaineer Comic Con with him. But yeah, I just don't get to see these guys as often. You know, it's it's a bummer. Whenever you see them, you always like catch up and you're like, dude, you know, no time has passed, but time has passed and we get older and it's sad. And I wanna do more crossovers because I love hanging out with these guys. If you see Jazz, tell him Red Dino says hi. Ooh, we got Liana next. So she in the show was like a good guy and then becomes like a bad guy kind of ish. When we all got to New Zealand, Chip invited us to a dinner just to kind of introduce and get to meet everyone. And so that was more the first time I had conversation conversation with her. But I actually got to know her better after Beast Morphers at conventions. We sat next to each other at, what was it? Um, Pasadena Comic Con. And so she was telling me how she was doing a YouTube channel and I, her fiance at the time, now her husband was there too. And so just getting to talk to both of them is really cool. Um, Faith-based as well, like myself. So we kind of bonded over that. And I always just, Love being able to talk to people who share that connection because in LA, you know, Hollywood in general, you never know when your next job is coming and it could be very, very stressful. But I don't know, when you trust in God, it's kind of like, it's easier to just go with the flow with it. It's like, I don't know what's happening tomorrow, but I've made it this far and something always happens like X, Y, Z. In the crossover, she was just playing the villain and I didn't have a scene where I like fought with her or anything. Um, and she wasn't on the base because she wasn't, a good guy at the time. She was still the bad guy, Roxy. The one time everyone went out after dinner and got to like, they went to a club to go hang out. I didn't get to go because I had an audition for Sabrina, the Netflix show at the time. I auditioned for a big character on that and I wanted to go make sure I was ready for it. You always want to be prepared for that next job, but I wish I was able to focus more and enjoy the job I was on because I was on location in New Zealand wanting to hang out with everyone. But I was like, I also want to, you know, book that next job and I didn't even book it. So I literally didn't hang out with them and I didn't book the job. The choices we make and the things we have to live with. Oh well. <laughs> Ooh, we got some gold, baby, baby. So Abraham, <laughs> I can't remember the story exactly, but we all had a dinner together with the Beast Morpher cast, and Abraham thought Austin was like the, the 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 driver or something. He didn't recognize him, and he introduced himself in such a way that he didn't put two and two together that Austin's the original Red Ranger, and he was like, Ah, uh, I'm sorry. It, it was just. So funny because, you know, it's like, oh, nice to meet you. I'm like, you know, I'm one of the Power Rangers. Who are you? And he had no idea. Uh, so whenever him and Austin see each other, they joke about that. He also writes poetry. So he was releasing his second book soon. Oh, a story with him and Dobby though. Dobby actually met him. Dobby's my Gold Ranger from Dino Charge. And they, they were telling me when we were out after filming one of the nights that Dobby was like talking to him like at a party or something. And then he ended up booking gold. And I don't remember if Do Davi might've even like helped coach him or something weird like that happened where the world is so small and you never know how things interconnect. And then after them meeting and then he became gold. So it was just super cool that my gold in some way influenced their gold to getting the part and just, it's amazing. Cause you know, little things, you, it's like a wave in the ocean, you know, it like affects another thing and another thing. That's kind of how it seemed to be with Power Rangers and all the inner connections between us and other cast members. Ooh, Peter Sudarso. I love Peter. I mean, if you have the last name Sudarso, apparently I love you because it's either Yoshi or Peter. If you don't know Yoshi Sudarso, Peter's brother is the Blue Ranger in my season. Peter is the Blue Ranger in Ninja Steel and they're literally brothers, like legit blood brothers who both became Blue Rangers one season to the next. That just still blows my mind. I mean, I don't know. The reason I even bring up Peter, you're like, okay, yeah, Peter's cool, but when did you work with him? Good question. 
question. So I didn't work with him on Power Rangers, but we're actually connected in three different universes, if I'm not mistaken. So we're both in the Power Ranger universe, right? We did a web series or a webtoon. Um, if you're familiar with the webtoon, The Boxer, so we did like a, a live action trailer for the boxer and him and I fight each other. And it was really cool. We actually carpooled together to Vegas and that was kind of the first time I really got to like hang out, hang out with Peter. And so we drove and got to hang out and talk for like four hours there. We stayed in a hotel, you know, different rooms, but like we just, anytime we weren't filming, we were hanging out together. So yeah, that's uh, universe two. So we're in Power Rangers together. We're in the boxer universe together. But then we both were in different episodes of Supergirl on the CW. So even though we didn't work together, we both exist in the CW universe together. So I'm hoping to work with him again. I love Peter, but yeah, amazing guy. Um, if you see him, tell him I say hi. If you see any of these people, I don't know why you'd be like, Brennan says hi, but you should. Do it. This beat is automatic. You know that Ciara song? Anyway. Uh, <coughs> Ciara, <laughs> Yellow Ranger from Megaforce. And again, you're like, when the heck did you work with Ciara? Kind of twice-ish in a way. Ciara and I actually grew up 30 minutes from each other, but we never knew that. So we're both from the same area, not in LA proper. Cause you're like, oh, you're both in LA. No, we're both not in LA. I believe it was when I booked Dino Charge and we got announced at Power Morphicon, they do a thing where we get to meet the previous cast for a moment. So I got to meet her like backstage just for a second and uh, didn't really talk to her too much other than conventions. There were a couple where we would work and sit next to each other and got along really well. And then I was asked to do a YouTube fan film where Dino Charge and Megaforce team up. And so that's where I really got to hang out with her. And I got some behind the scenes footage of that and pictures and stuff, put on her leather jacket from Megaforce cause she got to keep it. And I was like stuck in it. So there's a picture with it like over my head. I'm trying to get it off, which is funny. Um, and then another time I worked with her indirectly was doing a YouTube video for Annoying Orange where I voiced the red Mighty Morphin Ranger. And I think she voiced yellow. They mixed some of the colors around. I got it. We'll summon our swords. That's what we always do. So when you do voiceover, you don't typically record on the same day or at the same time as other actors. So we didn't come in at the same time, but in the finished project, project, in the finished product, you could hear us interacting together, even though I never actually worked with her on it. We were both in the project together. So Ciara is super sweet, lovely girl. Oh, I actually did a handstand on her too. I do a handstand on like every ranger. So that actually goes for all of these that you've seen. Um, but yeah, I think that one was at WonderCon, which is in Anaheim. Um, there's a video of me doing a handstand. Like she's flexing like this and like a half split kind of thing. So yeah. So these aren't the only Power Ranger actors that I've had the pleasure of working with. So if you wanna hear more behind the scenes stories, watch this video.